And now let us go to current electricity lesson 3. In lesson 2, we learned about uh, drift velocity and the relationship between drift velocity and current. Now, there is a fundamental law called Ohm's law in current electricity. Uh, the current I flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference V applied across the ends of the conductor if the temperature, a mechanical strain, etc. are kept constant. Uh, <clears throat> uh, means here is a conductor uh, across the end you apply a potential difference then there is a current I and this law says as this increases and this also increases. <coughs> so, so to x axis I am taking potential difference V that I have acted across the conductor to this axis Y axis current. So, since, since it is directly proportional, so it is a straight line. Means current is proportional to V potential difference or you can say conversely V is proportional to I. So, V is equal to some constant into I. That constant is represented as capital R called the resistance of the conductor, called the resistance of the conductor, V is equal to Ri or you can write V is equal to Ir, whichever is suitable to you. Now, where R is called the resistance of the conductor. Now, let us derive an expression for the resistance of this conductor. We know in the last lesson the drift velocity, that is, uh, when a potential difference was applied, the electrons were drifting to this side with a average velocity that was called the drift velocity and this was derived as small e capital E over m into tau where small e was the charge of electron, small m was the mass of electron, capital E is the electric field due to the potential difference where e is the charge of the electron, m is the mass of the electron, tau is the average time of relaxation, e is the cap electric field. Average time of relaxation means uh, as the electron is moving within the conductor, as the electron, free electron is moving within the conductor from, it collides with an ion here, ion here or, or an atom here, again collides here, again collides here, again collides here. So, there is a time from here to here, again there is a time from here to here, again there is a time from here to here, again there is a time from here to here. The average of that time is called the average time of relaxation. Now, so now to the next phase. Uh, so, this is this is your conductor. Uh, this is the potential difference P applied. So, this negative side pushes the electrons to this side, to this side with a velocity called the drift velocity. The length of the conductor from here to here is L. I is the conventional current. I is taken opposite to the direction of uh, drift velocity, right. Uh, also, V is the potential difference applied. Let L is the length of the conductor. We know electric field is V by L because in electrostatics, we had derived the expression for V was equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q over uh, R. Electric field was 1 by 4 pi if I am not Q over R square due to a single charge. So, if you divide this expression by, by R, you will get this. That is V divided by distance is equal to E. Here, this V is applied across a distance from here to here is L. This V is applied across a distance L. So, V over L is equal to your electric field how the potential difference changes with length is called the electric field. So, E is equal to V over L equation 2 and we also derived in the last lesson, uh, we also know current is equal to NEAVD, number of electrons per unit volume of the material which depends from material to material. Uh, e is the charge of electron, A is the area of cross section of the conductor, this area. Now, and drift Vd was your drift velocity. <clears throat> so, so from here I can be written as NEA, NEA for drift velocity I substitute small e capital E over m into tau. So, small e into small e becomes e square. So, N 
n e square capital a tau divided by m into capital e the electric field now for this capital e i will substitute v by l so in the next line here so so this becomes n e square a tau by m n e square a tau by m for capital e i substitute v by l means how the potential is changing with respect to length that is potential gradient so now i cross multiply ml comes to this side i m l is equal to n e square a tau v now <clears throat> i keep this i below this v means i keep it as v by i so so n e square a tau comes to this side so n e square a tau and v by i is nothing but resistance because i just explained v is equal to i r so r is equal to v by i so for v by i i substitute r the resistance of the conductor is equal to is equal to ml over n e square a tau where m is the mass of the electron l is the length of the conductor n is the number of electrons per unit volume small is the charge of the electron a is the area of cross section of the conductor tau is the average time of relaxation now if l is constant if l is constant a is constant tau is constant if constant and n is constant then this thing is a, is a constant resistance of a conductor is a constant if if length is if you take a conductor of longer length if l is more then the resistance will be more if area of cross section of the conductor if a is more this is in the denominator so r will be less that we will discuss in the next phase right so uh, then comes uh, uh, then comes the units of resistance now we have just learned v is equal to r i or you can write v is equal to i r so from this r is equal to v over i now if i put v as 1 volt and i as 1 ampere one unit of voltage in si unit one unit of current in si unit then the resistance is called 1 ohm and the symbol is of, is this for resistance right uh, now now while sir, uh, solving different circuit diagrams if you see a, such a symbol this means it is a resistance r if it is a variable resistance means if the value of r changes then it is represented by such a symbol or it can be represented by by such a symbol means a variable resistance this you will will study uh, while doing potentiometer an electrical instrument right for measuring internal resistance of a cell and the potential difference emf of a cell etc now the dimension of r since r is equal to v by i v is voltage that is work done per unit charge in electrostatics and i is current and work done is ml square t minus 2 that is force into displacement uh, charge is uh, current into time and divided by current so this becomes m to the power 1 l square t to the power minus 3 ampere to the power minus 2 is the dimension now from equation 2 that is uh, that is this equation that is this equation look l is in the numerator a is in the denominator so r is proportional to l r is inversely proportional to a that is equation 2 so from equation 2 since we derived r is equal to m l square by n uh, sorry ml by ml by n e square a tau l is in the numerator a is in the denominator so r is proportional to l r is proportional to 1 by a now what is the meaning means suppose there is a conductor like this there is another conductor like this both have the both have the same area of cross section now since a is constant the length of this conductor is more than this conductor so the resistance of this will be more than this that is what it says and what is the meaning of this <coughs> suppose there are two conductors uh, of same length this is one conductor and, and this is another conductor another conductor the length of this is same thing as length of this l is same but its area of cross section the area of cross section of this is more 
this is more so r is less means the resistance of this conductor is less as compared to resistance of this conductor because length same area is different now combining these two this as well as this so r is proportional to l over k so r is equal to some constant into l over a this constant is written as a rho called rho called called the specific resistance or electrical resistivity of the material of the conductor not conductor the material of which it is made of the resistivity or specific resistance uh, of the a conductor now so now if you compare now if you compare equation 3 now compare equation 3 with equation 2 equation 3 is your r is equal to rho l over a your equation 3 is equal to uh, r is equal to rho l over a and equation 2 was equal to r was equal to m l by n e square a tau this is also r this is also r same r so if you make them equal l cancels l cancels a cancels a cancels so i am left with rho so rho is equal to m over n e square tau so rho is equal to m over n e square tau the specific resistance now so from this what is the conclusion n is in the denominator so rho is proportional to 1 by n and what is small n number of free electrons per unit volume means in the conductor if you take unit volume 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter if you take a unit volume then the number of electrons in it is called n number of free electrons per unit volume so so if n is more therefore rho is less because it is in the denominator again if you look at equation 4 rho is proportional to 1 by tau tau is in the denominator the relax average relaxation time now if you increase now is interesting if you increase the temperature of the conductor if you increase the temperature of the conductor the free electrons move faster move faster so from going from here to here the time taken decreases going from here to here and colliding with an iron here by heating the conductor this is the conductor if you heat the conductor the electrons the free electrons move faster so the time to heat decreases so this decreases if this decreases therefore rho increases therefore rho increases that is rho depends on temperature of the conductor specific resistance depends on the temperature of the conductor 